Hey, thank you. Let's be opening up our Bibles to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, beginning verse 15. Paul writes and he says this. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members." Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Amen. We talk about a powerful passage. We shared this passage yesterday at Bob's memorial. This is one of the passages that Bob and I talked about on several occasions. We had a breakfast group that would get together almost every morning of the week at Cancun's, and we'd get there and we'd talk and discuss, and there would be times that I'd get there early so that Bob and I could have some conversation. And on several occasions, this passage, we talked about it. And Bob would say, Michael, this describes me to a T, as though he were saying something unique to me. (laughs) Because then my response would be back, Bob, This describes me to a T. Can anyone relate? Here is what I know is right to do, and I want to do that, but then I find myself doing this over here, the very thing that I don't want to do, the very thing that I hate. And sometimes that's the way our lives are, isn't it? The turmoil, the struggle. And that struggle not only consumes our mind, but it consumes our heart, and we find ourselves almost to the point of discouragement because this is where God wants me, but this is where I'm at. Now, is this the constant state that God wants you and I to live in? Because the same man that writes these words here writes these words in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places." Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances... Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer 
and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So the apostle writes in Romans 7 and says, here's reality in our lives. Here is what God wants me to do, and my heart wants to do it, and I end up doing the very thing I hate. I end up doing something that is against God's will. And that's the struggle. And what a wretched man I am. But then the question, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The man that writes that then says this to another group of Christians, stand firm, put on the whole armor of God. And the whole passage there in Ephesians 6 sounds victorious, doesn't it? Sounds confident, sounds assured that if I will do what's said here, I don't have to worry about this struggle That here is the victory that I have in Christ. And if I will put on the whole armor of God, I can fight the schemes of the devil. I can fight against the devil himself. And I can win the victory. And which is it for you and I? Is Paul contradicting himself here? Is the word of God being contradictory? It almost seems that way, doesn't it? But Paul's saying here in Romans, this is why God wants to help you. Because the reality is, a lot of us live in this struggle. And a lot of us find ourselves doing the very thing that we say we don't want to do, and almost on a regular basis. But through Jesus Christ, somehow things can be different. And so if I will put on the whole armor of God, then I'm going to be able to do what God wants me to do. Do you and I feel victorious right now? Do we feel confident? Are we assured Did we come in today, armor shining, sword sharpened, ready to sit down with fellow warriors, fellow soldiers, ready to praise God, ready to share the victory, ready to proclaim Jesus as Lord of our lives? Or did we come in here kind of crawling on hands and knees up to the table so that we could get in the shadow of the table? And beg for mercy. And folks, bottom line, either way was okay. Because the reality is sometimes the struggle is just overwhelming. But the thought you and I have to hold on to is this. Through Jesus Christ, the struggle does not gain the victory. And as long as I'm struggling, that means I'm trying. That means that there's something within me that the devil is trying to come after because he wants me to fail, he wants me discouraged, he wants me down and depressed. But if I'll remember to focus on Jesus and not the struggle, then things are going to be okay because then in any given moment, I will stand firm in Jesus Christ as a victorious soldier. Do we need to be reminded of this? Every one of us does, don't we? And folks, I think there's a message in here for the church that changes everything for you and I. We're in the season of the year now where Everyone is beginning to talk about Jesus. 
It amazes me how most of the year we struggle with opportunity to find someone to share our faith with. And God gives us this time every year to say, okay, you may have struggled (laughs) for 11 months. But now through Jesus Christ, here's 30 days out of this year when everyone, literally everyone, even the atheists, are talking about Jesus. So 11 months out of the year, I'll let you struggle. One month out of the year, let's talk Jesus Christ. Everyone's thinking about him. God giving us opportunity to join in the conversation. To say, let me tell you my story. And here is my struggle. But here is my victory. And would people listen? Probably so. But the message for you and I this morning that I really would like for us to understand is, folks, sometimes we fall so in love with the struggle that we forget victory is possible. Sometimes we so identify with Romans 7 that we forget there's Ephesians 6. Struggle is okay as long as struggle doesn't replace Jesus in our lives. Struggle is okay if in that struggle I look to Jesus. You remember Paul's words in Hebrews 12? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In your struggle, don't focus on the struggle Don't focus on your weakness. Focus on Him. Because that is where the victory comes from. You come in here struggling. You come in here defeated. You and I come in here down and discouraged. That's not where my thought, my mind, my heart needs to stay. My heart and mind and thought needs to go right here. So that if I am struggling and I am discouraged when we're visiting before the lesson, it's not about the Cowboys winning, the Saints losing, who's in the White House, who's on the West Coast, who's doing what. But it's about me going to you, you coming to me and saying, Trent, because of Jesus... I need your prayers, and here's my struggle. Now, what can I pray for you about? And that changes everything, folks. Because if I come in here defeated and struggling, and I go out defeated and struggling, I've missed this moment. I've missed an opportunity to become what God wants me to be. Amen? But if I come in here and I approach Trent and say, Trent, here's my weakness. What is yours? Can we pray for each other? And maybe instead of even visiting and talking, we just grab hands and we quietly pray for each other right here in the aisle. What's happened? I've gone from focusing on the struggle to focusing on him. And if I do that, then I stand firm. Because what we need out in the world today, when you and I walk out of here, is a people who are fully clothed in the armor of God, ready in God's power to fight the battle so that the world can see there's something unique and different about us. And the world starts looking at us and saying, I want what you have. Because as you and I look around this morning, yesterday some of us were talking and 
I made some comment, and one of the brothers said, and it was about coming to church today, and one of the brothers said, well, yeah, oh, I was talking about a, a couple that said they would be coming sometime after the first year. He said, well, good, we've got plenty of seats. I thought, well, that's kind of ingenious, isn't it? <laughs> and we do, don't we? Why do we have plenty of seats? Are people looking at us and seeing our good works and glorifying our Father in heaven and saying, here's where I'm going to come and find my answers to my life? And folks, the struggle so often stays focused on me, but with the armor of God, the focus is on Him. And we need more focus on Him. And as we start the new year in January, very purposeful, very directed preaching on what we need to be. so that we have a clear direction in mind. Here's what God expects of us. So between now and then, let you and I do some thinking. Am I going to stay focused on me in the struggle? Or am I going to accept the fact the struggle is real, but my focus is going to move to Him And through his power and strength, I'm going to allow him to give me the victory. And which will it be? Does this make any sense? Yes or no? Let's do some thinking. And let's do some praying. And let's be hopeful. And maybe by this time next year, when someone says, oh, I'm bringing a friend to church, it'll be like, okay, let's set up 10 more chairs because all the pews are full. That happens when you and I walk in victory and put on the full armor of God.